It is such a gorgeous morning. Oh my gosh. <sighs> the sun is so luxurious. Also, thank you so much Organic Basics for sponsoring this video. So the ground hasn't been freezing at night, which means basically now you can start planting. The problem is we don't have the fence built and without the fence, you know, all the wildlife will just basically eat everything. Um, so I'm gonna plant some things up here near the tiny house that wildlife don't like, um, which is basically just like herbs and certain types of flowers. And I had to till the soil by hand. We have a rototiller that we bought used, but it actually broke last season, so we got it fixed, but then this season, like a week and a half ago, it broke again, and now nobody wants to pay to fix it. So we're kind of just gonna do things by hand from now on, which is totally fine. Um, it was just a lot of work to till that ground. There were so many rocks everywhere. So I got rid of all the rocks, I tilled the ground. This morning I went and picked up some organic apple compost um, just down the way from a local orchard. And I had started a bunch of herb starts maybe about a month ago, and they actually are doing really well. So I planted those in a little patch near the house. Singing voices in the air, birds diving in delight. We were dancing in the moonlight. On the Basically, I just mixed up in here a wildflower mixture of like all the native wildflowers. To live on the mountain by your side, picking berries with the bird, sweets are for the wanderer. Paint a couple pictures of the sun. Forget my dues to the same Asking the mice 
supposed to be okay. I'm actually going to plant quite a bit of things here because I'm going to use a hose and divert all of my gray water down underneath the house and let it drain right here so I can utilize my gray water and not waste it. The end of this pipe on the gray water tank is threaded, which is really nice. That means I can literally just go like this. Hopefully. Can I do that? Yep. Do this and then run the hose underneath the house. I don't know how I'm going to get under there. I was just running around in the hills and on the other side of the mountain, the yellow wildflowers are starting to bloom. <sighs> These flowers are just always the first signs of spring and they haven't started up on our mountain yet but they're on the other side also this is mountain sage it grows on these hills and I'm going to make like sage smudging wraps with them wow it's a beautiful evening I'm going down into the cabin to probably spend the rest of the evening spinning my yarn because I'm incredibly bored and lonely and have nothing else to do except for spin yarn I guess. I'm slowly working on this spinning project. It's been a little bit but every day I've been coming in here and once I get all of the roving spun I'm going to weave it into a blanket. I will show you quickly how easy it is because I think people kind of tend to think it's like this really complicated process when in actuality it's really quite easy and so so, so much fun. So basically I have a bunch of this and it's just wool roving. I got it from a local farm. You can find it on like Craigslist and stuff. And basically what you wanna do is, this is like pretty thick. You wanna separate a small piece off of that. The smaller piece you use, the easier it is. Um, you don't have to like stretch as much with your hands. And then just stretch the beginning a little bit. And then I have this end that I'm gonna connect it to. You just kind of lay it together. Waiting for some coffee to boil. I wonder what temperature it is outside. Ooh, <laughs> feels pretty good outside. It'd be kind of fun to run to the top of the mountain in the dark and watch the moon rise. I've been noticing it's been rising over the mountains every morning at like six. I wonder if I could make it up there in time. Possibly. If I get my act together and get changed and drink this coffee. Still waiting for it to boil. <laughs> Drank coffee. Got dressed. Got my light. Uh, I wonder if it has any charge. Oh, it's got two. Okay, putting boots on. We're gonna run up there. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's dark out. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. I never asked for the spool to run spin, but there they roll. No, I never asked for the spool to run spin, but there they roll. I never asked for to carve your ribs, but 
These colors right now are so amazing. skies start to lighten and it's just so quiet and so beautiful this is like by far my favorite time to be awake it feels like the world is quiet and you have the time and the space to really think I don't know there's seriously something so nice about it the beautiful beginnings of the yellow flowers these ones are really coming along. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love these flowers. So I was sitting on my bed the other day drinking tea, as I do quite often, staring at the wall, and I started to realize how blank and empty that wall looked. <laughs> so I got an idea to put a shelf on the wall. When I put in the bar right underneath the window in the back corner, I just got those shelf brackets from just the hardware store. And I didn't really love them, to be honest. Um, I didn't like how it was painted shiny black and they kind of felt a little bit mm, not the highest quality. So I was really thinking about how I wanted to put the shelf up on this wall. I really didn't want to buy shelf brackets again. So I had the idea to try to like maybe make shelf brackets. I know that my brother has been learning some about welding. So a couple days ago, I drove across the mountains to my parents' house. And let me tell you, the drive was the most terrifying thing in the entire world. It started off just like a small amount of snowing. And then all of a sudden it just got this intense blizzard for miles and miles and miles because my parents live on the other side of the mountain so you have to drive up and over a mountain range you know to get there and oh my gosh it was so stressful it's like an hour of driving through a blizzard basically I started off with just like pieces of metal um, and I used a saw to cut that metal down to the sizes that I needed And then I used a drill press to drill holes into the metal so that I could screw the metal to the walls. Basically, at that point, the next thing was just to weld the two pieces together to form a bracket. Screw anything up. So when you weld, this uses a spool. So mm -hmm. when the welder's on and you press it, it just comes out. <laughs> and you can change the rate that that happens with okay. this. So, so when you weld, like you're obviously putting molten metal onto other metal. Yeah. So the metal, when metal's hot, it's in like an expanded form and then it shrinks. So what happens, like if I were to just like put a weld along this left side mm -hmm. um, it would start to shrink and it would pull the bracket over that direction oh I see so what we need to do is and Noah showed me this is like you basically want to what you first do is like what's called tacking it so you just tack a weld tack a weld and you basically want to do one side and then do the opposite side like as yeah, quickly as that you makes can sense. so that it doesn't deflect or it deflects as much as little as possible Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
about a year ago, I left these plants here at my parents' house for my sister to take care of. My life was just feeling so crazy and hectic. I told my sister that I would take them back once I finished the tiny house. And finally, we're going to take these back. <laughs> After a year. I'm sorry, Alexa. Okay, so I've already used the belt sander on this, but I'm gonna use my little sander to do like touch up work and to do these corners, cause you know, you don't want it to be like, this is super sharp right now. <laughs> Sweet. 
I came out here to water the garden and all my herbs were eaten by something. They just bit everything off. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so sad. That's really sad and really frustrating to be honest. Dang. <sighs> wow, this soup is healing my sadness. <laughs> I'm still so sad about my herbs being eaten. <laughs> it's so weird because I specifically looked up things that deer and like groundhogs don't like. I mean, that's the only things I planted, like from that list. I don't know what ate it. <sighs> Just sad. This bread is so good. Now that it's like summer season, I'm probably not gonna be burning any more wood. So I think I'm gonna move this wood over to that pile right there. So yeah. Mm -hmm. This empty space here is kind of making me feel like I should build a bench to go like right here to sit on. Best thing about using scrap wood for like building stuff like this is if you mess up, it's okay. <laughs> Thick enough? Maybe. Maybe I should go a little thicker. Well, the problem is this piece of wood is warped, so any thicker might not be good. I'll go like an inch thicker. Living alone has really made me sometimes neglect my personal hygiene. <laughs> oh, I can just get so caught up in life that I just forget to shower. <laughs> Very much ready for a river bath right now is how I'm feeling. Whoa. Nothing in the world feels better than a river swim. And I even shaved my legs today, and I just feel so clean. 
<sighs> I'm so good right now, oh my gosh. And I've been religiously wearing my Organic Basics underwear <laughs> in the river for my swims, which is actually the sponsor of this video. Organic Basics is a clothing company that sells activewear, underwear, and like everyday kind of clothes. It's really cool because they're a completely carbon neutral company. All their clothing is ethically made in Europe with organic, recycled, and eco-friendly materials, which is just honestly so, so cool. But really the thing that I like most about their clothes is just how comfortable and functional everything is. Like this white t-shirt, I have worn doing <laughs> so many different things like yoga, running around the mountains, working outside in the garden, honestly everything and their underwear is just really nice and comfortable and dries really quickly after you jump in a body of water. <laughs> I'm wearing a size small and everything which seems to fit me pretty well. In the description below there is a link to 10% off as well as links to everything that I own by them. So yeah, thank you so much Organic Basics for sponsoring this video. Love the brand, love their clothes, amazing. I'm gonna go run around the mountains now. <laughs> I've been reflecting a lot these days, um, just because I've been here a year now. It's just crazy how life happens and I don't know. The story of this farm and how, even how I got here, there's just been so many things. Like, it all really started when I was in high school. My parents had both lost their jobs and they wanted to start living a more like alternative lifestyle. So they bought this land in the hopes to start a farm. They didn't really have that much financial stability at the time, which I think was the main problem. I think they did the farm for about four years. Every year they were just like barely making it. It got to a point where they weren't able to make their payments. They had to move back to the city and start working again. I was in the end of high school, early college years. I was pretty serious about school at the time. I had um, actually finished two years of college while I was still in high school. So I was really ahead. I was on the track to do like biochemistry. I loved science. Science was like my favorite subject. But also at the time I was feeling really passionate about like more alternative lifestyles and I was doing a lot of yoga. Like I started doing yoga in high school and I was just doing it so, 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 so much. Anyways, when I was in college, I got to a point where I was gonna have to start taking out some loans to pay for it. Around that time, I started working as a lab tech, which is kind of what you would do if you got a biology slash chemistry degree. And I, oh, I hated it so much. I mean, you just sat inside for like 10 hours a day in this lab, writing down numbers. I mean, it was just horrible horrible and I thought to myself wow like when I graduate with loans I'm gonna have absolutely no freedom and I don't even know if I want to be studying this right now you know like I liked it but I felt like there was just more to see in life and more to do and I, I also felt like you know what I'm so young like I have all the time in the world to like potentially go back to school later in life after I do things you know <laughs> and I'm just like a very like adventurous person like I want to see and experience everything so I left college and I just got a job and started working in the city I was pretty confused as to what I wanted to do but I knew one thing was I wanted to further my studies of yoga really wanted to like dive deeper into this so that's when I went to India after saving some money for the training um, I went to India and got my teacher's training. And at that point, I, I loved teaching. I thought it was what I really wanted to do with my life. And so I just kind of started taking jobs wherever I could, traveling in Asia and working as a yoga teacher. I was able to make just enough money to live, but no money to save, right? But I was working in these crazy places. Like I worked in the desert in Myanmar. <laughs> we would take this little canoe boat out to this island thing and I would teach this like sunset yoga class. 
It was so crazy. I was working in Bali for a bit and in Sri Lanka for quite a long time at a little beach town. I loved this life. <clears throat> Meeting new people, experiencing different ways of living and being able to work as well. It was like, it was like really amazing. I loved it. And I really wanted to just kind of continue this and see more of the world and experience just life. When I returned back to the US, it was a little bit difficult for me to understand like where I was going because although I had a lot of experiences, I still didn't really have a degree or I didn't own anything. I didn't own a car or just like anything. I And I also didn't have any money either. So I was feeling a little bit not great about myself. I thought mm, maybe it's time to get my act together and not just run around the world teaching yoga. Like maybe I need to be more mature or something, you know? So then at that point I started working and I thought, right, well, my parents want to move out to this farmland at some point. It would be really amazing if I had a little house there where I could live there, take care of my parents in their old age and grow some things, start a farm. I, I thought this would be something like really nice um, to do when I was like 30, you know, because <laughs> I'm, I'm 22. But I thought, you know, maybe now's the time I can build that house and then I can go off and teach yoga and do what I want and then come back to this little house later in life. That's So that's when I really started to save money. Like I was working so, so, so many hours, taking lots of different jobs as well. I was doing some modeling jobs and but but mostly I was working just like customer service, you know, waking up at like four in the morning, biking to work because I didn't have a car at the time in the dark and the cold and the rain. <laughs> and yeah, just working a ton. And that's how I was able to save the money for this house. So then I moved out here thinking I would spend the spring and the summer. So this was last spring and summer out here building the house and then I would go off and get a job and teach more yoga and maybe fall in love and but that's around the time when like the pandemic happened right at that point I was like well I guess I'm stuck here <laughs> not that it's a bad thing I mean I love being here but at the same time I don't think I was necessarily ready to settle down into like a place alone to live in that's like super isolating. I love my life and I'm super proud of myself for finishing this house, but I didn't really expect to be here for so long all alone. Like I was thinking I was gonna build this house and then leave and travel and teach yoga and then come back when my parents were here. Like maybe in like five years or something. Being around people for me is one of my favorite things. Laughing with people and sharing love and being here alone is just, it's just really hard. It's really, really hard, especially since I'm so close with my family. I tend to film always, you know, the beauty that I see and I try to really film the things that I find very inspiring. But there's times when I'm really unhappy and sad and lonely. To be honest, in those moments, the last thing I wanna do is pick up a camera and film. So I tend to not film those things just because I think I need like my personal space. I've struggled a lot this year, like a lot. I've struggled so much, mentally especially. But I've also had one of the best most beautiful years of my life. So I don't know, that's just my story of how this all came to be. And I really do feel very strongly about the idea of not forcing life to go the way you want it to, but being open to letting things happen as they may. You know, I think when you try to force life to go how you want it to, inevitably, it usually doesn't go that way. <laughs> and then you're suffering. But if you approach it with a sense of knowing that life will lead you to where you need to be, it almost just lets go of all the stress. I do feel deep within me that life is going to bring me to where I need to go. And I don't need to think about plans for the future. I don't need to think about any of this because I know that as long as I'm doing the things I'm passionate about, life will bring me to 
to where I need to go. And these are my little wraps. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the air tonight feels so good. And these mountains, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again Organic Basics for sponsoring this video. Okay, see you later. <laughs>